YR-4 is a newly discovered asteroid on December 27, 2024, and currently holds the top spot on the list of asteroids with the highest risk of colliding with Earth. Calculations suggest that if a collision were to happen, it would occur on Wednesday, December 22, 2032. This means we only have seven years left. But how did this happen? How did we miss such a dangerous object? And could this asteroid really end life on Earth, or is this just media exaggeration? Let's find out. The inner and outer solar system is filled with asteroids. It's impossible to know their exact number, but we do know that there are fewer large asteroids compared to smaller ones. Nevertheless, the numbers are alarming. For example, in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, it is estimated that there are about 1.5 million asteroids larger than one kilometer in diameter. We can't even account for the asteroids smaller than one kilometer because we lack the technology to count them. Estimates suggest that there are millions, possibly tens of millions, of small asteroids in that region. For comparison, consider this. About 66 million years ago, an asteroid with a diameter of around 10 kilometers struck Earth, wiping out nearly all species, including all the dinosaurs except for birds, and 75% of all life forms at that time. So, the fact that there are 1.5 million asteroids larger than one kilometer in our near vicinity is genuinely concerning. Moreover, approximately 200 of them have a diameter greater than 100 kilometers. To put that into perspective, the largest asteroids to have struck Earth probably collided during the early days of the solar system, about 4.5 billion years ago. Back then, the solar system was much more chaotic. In fact, during that period, it's believed that Thea, a Mars-sized protoplanet, collided with Earth, launching material into orbit that later formed the Moon. However, during that period, Earth's surface was much more molten and covered in lava, which caused most of the traces left by these mega-collisions to be erased. The remnants of these impacts were largely lost due to the highly molten and lava-filled state of the surface. About 3 to 3.5 billion years ago, ancient traces found in a part of South Africa's Barberton Greenstone Belt indicate that craters created by asteroids had reached diameters of up to 1,000 kilometers. The asteroids that formed these craters were around 20 to 50 kilometers in diameter. These impacts would have been large enough to potentially wipe out all life on Earth had there been complex life forms at that time, not just bacteria and archaea. In fact, if complex life forms like those existed on Earth back then, these impacts could have destroyed all of them in a single strike. And just beyond Mars, there are about 200 asteroids that are more than twice the size of those we've just mentioned. But as I previously mentioned and as this graph shows, fortunately, the larger an asteroid is, the less likely it is to be in space, and consequently, the lower the chance of it colliding with Earth. For example, starting with the smaller ones, asteroids smaller than one meter in diameter fall to Earth daily, with dozens of them entering the atmosphere. While these small asteroids are numerous, their total mass can exceed 100 tons per day. Not a small amount. Fortunately, most of them burn up and convert into heat in the upper layers of the atmosphere, leaving behind the beautiful visual display we call a meteor. Asteroids ranging in size from 1 to 20 meters in diameter fall to Earth between 1 and 5 times every 5 years, depending on their size. Almost none of these reach the surface, but they burn much brighter in the atmosphere. The real danger begins with asteroids around 20 meters in size, which fall to Earth approximately every 60 years. This is because, beyond the size, asteroids start reaching the surface, and even if they don't reach the surface, the shock waves they generate in the atmosphere can cause damage on the ground. For example, the asteroid that fell over Chelyabinsk, Russia in 2013 was this size. The shock waves from this meteor, equivalent to a 500 kiloton explosion, shattered the windows of thousands of buildings and injured hundreds of people. Asteroids between 50 and 100 meters in diameter are large enough to almost certainly reach the surface. These asteroids hit Earth once every few hundred to a few thousand years. They can cause local but significant destruction, as in the case of the Tunguska event, and if they fall into oceans, they can trigger tsunamis, causing additional damage. 
NASA considers asteroids that are 140 meters or larger to be real threats. These asteroids fall to Earth once every 10,000 years, and when they do, they can cause serious destruction. For example, if such a meteor were to fall in a crowded city like Istanbul, it could destroy hundreds of buildings and cause thousands of deaths. Asteroids one kilometer or larger can cause global effects. By global effects, I don't necessarily mean the extinction of life, but they can still lead to catastrophic events such as sudden climate changes, massive tsunamis, fires that can last for years if not addressed, and weeks of darkness caused by dust blocking the sky and the sun. These asteroids hit Earth every 500,000 years. Asteroids larger than 10 kilometers not only cause global destruction, but can also lead to the extinction of numerous species, or, depending on their size and impact, even wipe out nearly all life on Earth. These events occur approximately once every 100 million years. Of course, all these numbers are statistical. A 10-kilometer asteroid drifting through space doesn't check a calendar and decide, oh, 100 million years have passed, time to hit Earth. Instead, we calculate the frequency of major impacts based on astronomical observations and geological records. These numbers are derived from statistical analysis rather than strict timing. Theoretically, there is nothing preventing two massive asteroids from striking Earth just five years apart. However, such gigantic asteroids are relatively rare in space, making their impact probabilities lower. After all, the asteroids in our solar system have had 4.6 billion years to either settle into a stable orbit, collide with a planet, or fall into the sun and be destroyed. Most of them have already done one of these things, keep that in mind. The same uncertainty applies to the damage an asteroid might cause on Earth. While the devastation from a 50-kilometer asteroid impact is almost a certainty, the destruction caused by smaller asteroids depends on factors such as the angle and velocity of impact. For instance, the exact same asteroid hitting Earth head-on at a massive speed of 20 kilometers per second and at a near 90 degree angle would cause catastrophic destruction. However, if it were moving in the same direction as Earth's orbit, at a relatively slower speed of around 4 to 5 kilometers per second, and striking at a very shallow angle, it might not even reach the surface. Think of it this way, the steeper the entry angle, the longer the asteroid must travel through the atmosphere. The longer it stays in the atmosphere, the more time it has to burn up. So, we condense all these different risk probabilities into a single number. Experts and governments use a scale called the Torino Scale to assess impact hazards. This unusual graph has kinetic energy on the vertical axis, representing the energy an asteroid would release upon impact, regardless of its speed or angle. On the horizontal axis, we plot the impact probability, which must be calculated separately for each asteroid. As you might expect, the higher the probability of an asteroid hitting Earth and the greater the energy it would release, the higher its rating on the Torino scale. This is represented by the orange and red zones in the upper right corner. Conversely, the lower the impact probability and the less energy it would release, the lower the rating on the scale. You'll notice that most of the scale is occupied by values ranging from 0 to 4. That's because the likelihood of an asteroid both carrying immense energy and having a high probability of impact is relatively low. Now, with all this in mind, what do we know about this newly discovered asteroid, YR-4? Let's get to that right away. YR-4 is estimated to be between 40 and 90 meters in diameter, with a 1.6% to 2.2% probability of colliding with Earth. These uncertain numbers might surprise you, but that's precisely the key takeaway from this video. Look, this is what an asteroid looks like through our telescopes. Or, if I stabilize the background, it appears like this. Now, try calculating its diameter and trajectory. The videos I just showed are compiled from observations spanning several days or even weeks. And we only just discovered this asteroid on December 27th, 2024, thanks to astronomers in Chile. That means only about a month and a half has passed since its discovery. And what does that mean? This means that we only know a one and a half month segment of this asteroid's orbit. 
of course, by analyzing just a short portion of its much longer orbit and applying orbital mechanics, we can estimate the full trajectory of an asteroid that we know is orbiting the Sun. For example, we already know that YR-4 completes one full orbit around the Sun in approximately 3.99 Earth years, and that its orbital inclination relative to Earth's is 3.41 degrees. However, these are still estimates, and the margin of error is not yet close enough to zero. Most of the time, when a new celestial object is discovered, we need to observe at least one full orbit to accurately determine how it is influenced by various gravitational forces along its path. So, there's a probabilistic approach involved here. By analyzing our observations taken over a few days, we try to predict where the asteroid will be the next day. After a day passes, we check, was our prediction accurate? Maybe 99% correct, but 1% off. We then update our calculations with this new information and predict the next day's position. In reality, these calculations aren't just made one day ahead, they are projected for the asteroid's position over the next 100 years. But for simplicity, I'm explaining it step by step. By continuously comparing our predictions with actual measurements, we gradually reduce the margin of error. However, this margin is still not close enough to zero. While we can predict how major gravitational forces, such as those from the Sun and planets, affect the asteroid with high confidence, smaller celestial bodies can also influence its path. The precise gravitational effects of these smaller objects are harder to determine. I explained this concept in detail in the three-body problem video. Moreover, even the orientation of small objects like asteroids as they orbit the Sun can influence their trajectory. The amount of gas and dust that may be released from their surface depends on which side is facing the Sun, which in turn can slightly alter their orbit. Over months and years, these tiny changes accumulate, creating uncertainties that are difficult to calculate. This is why, when analyzing YR4, we can only estimate probabilistically whether its orbit will intersect with Earth's, and if so, on what exact date. Current calculations suggest that YR4 and Earth's paths may intersect on Wednesday, December 22, 2032, with an impact probability of 2.2%. Here's a graphical representation. Each yellow dot represents a possible trajectory YR4 could take on December 22, 2032. Notice that only a few of these yellow dots overlap with Earth at the center. That overlap ratio corresponds to the 2.2% probability. However, periodic recalculations could increase or decrease this percentage, just to be clear. Similarly, YR4's exact size can only be determined more accurately once multiple telescopes observe it from different angles and precise measurements are made. The bad news is that we've just discovered this asteroid, but between April this year and June 2028, it will be too far away for ground-based optical telescopes to observe it. Fortunately, infrared telescopes will still be able to track it allowing us to continue monitoring its trajectory. That said, by the time I publish this video and you watch it, the numbers I mentioned may have already changed. Now, to better understand the risk, let's go back to the Torino scale. A 2.2% probability falls within the 0.01 to 0.99 range, which corresponds to this section of the scale, and with a size between 40 and 90 meters, it falls within this vertical range. When we match these values on the Torino scale, we see that YR4 corresponds to level 3. As I mentioned earlier, a Torino scale rating of 3 means that the asteroid or comet will pass quite close to us, but the risk of impact remains low. Additionally, there are less precise calculations that show the most likely impact locations along this red trajectory line. So, there's no need to rush your bucket list just yet. Instead, our Colombian and Indian viewers might want to think about it. Just kidding. On a serious note, if the worst-case scenario happens in YR, 4 actually hits Earth in 2032, it won't pose a threat to humanity or life as a whole, but it could cause significant destruction at the impact site. If it happens to hit a major city, it could wipe it off the map. This is exactly why we shouldn't be reducing but increasing our investments in space research. 
We already know how to protect ourselves from these asteroids, and if we allocate enough resources, we could dramatically extend the lifespan of our species. But how to counter asteroids like the one that wiped out the dinosaurs is a topic for another video. If you don't want to miss it, turn on notifications now. So, that's the story. Why are, for is a serious asteroid serious enough to deserve humanity's attention, but not enough to cause widespread panic. For now, based on what we know, it could cause a Chelyabinsk-like event, a smaller but frightening disaster, or even carve out a one kilometer wide crater like the famous Behringer Crater in Arizona, wiping out everything at the impact site people, animals, plants, and cities alike. Over the coming months and years, our observations will determine the asteroid's mass, composition, and trajectory more precisely. If any critical discoveries are made, I'll be here to keep you updated. If you enjoyed this video, I highly recommend watching my in-depth look at the final moments of the dinosaurs. See you in the next video. Take care and don't forget to look up.